20 repetitions of each exercise, ladies. And we're going to do single calf raises. So when you're ready, let's begin. Now the modification will be to take some point of contact for balance if required. So calf raises, as in when you're ready, off you go. Now I'm going to bring my camera down. Everybody else can stay exactly as they are. And I just want you to have a little eyeball here of how these car braces can be because the lower you are, the easier the balance will be. But we do need to challenge ourselves. So actually coming up higher will change the muscles within the foot and the ankle and the core unit. So play with the height and also how much control you have on the way down. You will find sometimes you will crash. And as you tire, that will be more noticeable. Please continue through. Collarbone is nice and open. Nice tall posture. Fantastic. And you can relax. No, I didn't count. We're just going to take it that we've done 20. Let's do the other side. We're looking at a nice neutral pelvis at the same time. As soon as you're ready, let's begin. So we're just coming up, playing with the height we can achieve. One side may feel different to the other. Notice how it feels. Good. Taking support if you need it. Playing with your height. Nice open collarbone. Nice breath. All of those things. And again, I'm not counting. I'm doing a guesstimate, but it would be 20 repetitions on those calf raises. And that's lovely. Wonderful. How slow and controlled can you be on the way down? And we'll make this our last one. 20 other recommended um, repetitions. Okay, so now we're going to come down to the floor and we're going to go for the bridge exercise. Now, specifically, the aim will be to go for a single leg bridge, which would be like so. But there's a tricky point, and that is actually lowering the pelvis equally on the left hand on the right. So the modification will be two feet on the floor and look at having the body weight on your feet on the big toe, outside of the foot and the heel. Engaging and feeding the glutes and adding a nice breath with the exercise is always lovely too. But then if we go to the ultimate aim of the exercise, that will be to elevate one leg off and I use my hands underneath because then if I can land both hands on the left and right on the fingertips equally, then that's going to help me gauge that my pelvis is lying in a nice neutral. So I just use that personally for my gauge. Now notice as soon as you take that leg off the floor, how deep the hamstrings and the glutes will be working with the core unit and the muscles surrounding on the outside of the pelvis. Yeah, it's that control on the way down. And yes, come towards the end of those repetitions, you're going to really be feeling it. That's lovely. You can see that we've got modifications going on with some of the coaches and that's absolutely good. Because we need to listen to our body and what we need to do. Squeeze through the glutes and the hamstrings. All of the muscles through that leg will be working nicely. Now, as usual, Louise hasn't counted, so I'm going to say that we've done 20. Now let's come up to do the other side. As you peel your foot off, you will notice if the pelvis is keeping centered. Absolutely, one side can be trickier than the other. That is not uncommon. But we are looking at having a nice centered pelvis as best as we can. Now, if you're tightening your hamstrings, you're going to notice. And by all means, take a stretch in your hamstrings prior to the doing this exercise or if you need it during. Notice that the hips don't come off that high in this exercise. There isn't much space between the floor and my hands. I could maybe get a bit higher. <laughs> That's making me challenge myself. <laughs> Always good to challenge. <laughs> and we will make that your last one. As I said previously, it would be 20 of those. Okay, so now we're going to do a standing exercise, and that will be a sit to stand. But on one leg is the ultimate aim on this exercise. Let's give it a go. 
So I'm going to raise the camera up. So the modification, of course, would be two feet on the floor, sit down and proper sit. So then stand up, use your glutes, your core unit, nice and tall, to then come back down again. You can use your breath in the exercise as well. So a nice strong exhale is always lovely. And it's the control on the way down, not just the power up. If you're doing a single leg, you could use something to give you a point of balance. Again, I'm only using a fingertip. And you're looking at landing equally on your pelvis, not on the wonk. Hey, and I've just done a wonk. As I said it, I've done a wonky stand up. So now I'm going to take my balance away. And I'm going to lie that on the floor. Okay, so taking my balance away, I'm now going to come down. A nice exhale, coming down, a nice exhale, coming down. Now do you want to use your arms? They could come across you, or you may want to take them in front of you. Ensure you get to a nice tall leg before you actually go back down again. Use your breath with the exercise, and no, I haven't counted. I've done a nice guesstimate, <laughs> Susie's laughing at me, <laughs> but we know that the guidelines are recommending 20. <laughs> and you can relax. Now we have one more exercise and that will be done on the left and on the right and that's lying down, ladies. So I'm going to bring my camera down. Okay, so nice long body. The modification could be a fingertip here, but please keep your shoulder back. Fingertip to the floor if need be. I'm going to flex my foot and my leg is straight. And we are looking at lifting the leg and keeping the pelvis centered. It would be really easy to roll back. So I'm going to go through the teaching points. That is what we don't want. Okay. It is how high can you actually lift the leg without the pelvis rolling backward. And do challenge yourself on the height. And yes, you could put a hand just on the edge here to just check that the pressure doesn't push into your hand further than just that sense of touch. Good. Add your breath with the exercise. I'm going to bring myself back up. Add some breath with that exercise as well. So this is an abduction exercise. Using your breath will be incorporating all your muscles within your core unit with you. Good. Challenging the height. Lovely. And ensuring that your pelvis isn't rolling back. Be aware that your legs aren't drifting behind you. That's another way that we can counterbalance the balance by taking legs behind. So actually, as you glance down, you should just about see your toes. Play with the height. And no, I haven't counted. So we will now assume that you've done 20 and then we'll roll on to the other side. And this will be your last exercise, ladies. And as I said, this is the strength for the muscles to help prepare us to run. Keep that on the go. And so while you're doing those, I'm just gonna kind of like sum up towards the end here. Now the aim, again, as previous video we done, is to actually continue to practice those reps if they are difficult to complete and build up to the ultimate aim of the exercise. And when you start your running regime, yes, begin with one to two minute short runs, looking at the intensity of your length and stride um, and power. And then obviously bring in the nice march and walk in between those running um, times that you're doing. Anybody that is currently attending or has attended the Adore Your Floor program, these exercises will absolutely complement the Adore Your Floor Home Functional program. So by all means, bring these in to your home practice. We trust that you've enjoyed participating with us. I can trust that these ladies' legs are getting really tired now. You can take a rest <laughs> while I keep talking. Um, so we, um, we do hope that you found these videos useful, um, doing them in real time so you can actually participate with us. We always do love to hear your feedback. Um, so thank you for participating, who is watching now, and thank you to the Adoy Floor Coaches for your input. and. Um, Thank you very much. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.